Okay, this is 2009, free response question number two. So let's go through this question as quickly as we can. Go ahead, pause the video and read the question if you haven't already. 2A asks, what is the 70th percentile of the distribution? So to use percentile, that is normally an inverse norm type of problem. So I'm going to use inverse norm. But if I use anything, normal CDF or inverse norm, I'm going to want to draw a nice picture of this. And I'm going to label what I'm drawing. So it's a normal curve. Here's the shorthand with a mean of 125 and a standard deviation of 6.5. That's what you're, we are using right here. Now I will label the curve on the bottom. So because the mean is 125, that goes in the middle. And then remember about halfway down the slope is one standard deviation away, and that is 6.5. So that's going to be 131.5. And then lastly, we get 138 at the top, two standard deviations away. And then down at the bottom, you can fill those in as well. And I would go so far as to say you know, mu in this situation is 125 and sigma is 6.5. All right. So the question wants you to figure out the 70th percentile. So 70th percentile is somewhere in here where the curve on the left is 70. Remember percentile is all the scores that you beat. If you're at the 70th percentile, that means you beat 70% of the scores. So that is this value right here. Um, so what is that value? I would do inverse norm. So bring out the calculator. We go to distribution. Inverse norm is choice three. The area is 0 0.70. Mean is 125. And standard deviation is 6.5. So our answer for that, 128.40. So I would actually write out the 70th percentile is approximately 128.4 feet. And that answers part A. So for 2B, it says, what is the probability at least two out of the five randomly selected cards in the study will stop in a distance that is greater than the distance calculated in part A? So what do we got? 128 point, got to get the 128.4. So that was the distance that we got. Let's put down mu equal to 125 again. I'm drawing a separate curve because it's a separate problem. This is x equal to 128.4 and we know that the area is shaded to the right because it was the 70th percentile so this area here is 30 percent of the curve so the probability that a randomly selected car is above 128.4 should be 30 percent because that value was at the 70th percentile so this is a binomial situation so i'm going to write a binomial cdf Ooh, not yet we're not there yet this is a binomial situation where you know, uh, the total number of trials is five, and the probability of success is 0 0.3. So, that being said, let's let, uh, what are we gonna hear? Let's let y equal the number of cars greater than 128.4 feet, then we can say if y, and we have the probability of y, all right, so if y equals zero, that means that we had zero cars. If we selected five, zero of them would be greater than 128.4. That represents one of them, two, three, four, and five. The most we can have is five, because we're only selecting five cars. That's what n equals two. So what we want is we want at least two so we want all of these values right here. What we don't want is zero and one. So the way I'd write this up, the probability that y is greater than or equal to two. Now, the way I would solve this is I would subtract off zero and one. So I would say this equals one minus the probability that y is less than or equal to one, right? Um, to figure out this value here, I would use the calculator again. So let's bring out the calculator. This would be a binomial distribution. So I go into distribution. I like scrolling up. We get to choice B. It's binomial CDF because we want it to add up as we go. We want 0 and 1. So the number of trials is 5, probability success 0.3, and the x value here is 1. So we're going to find that value. It's 0.5282. 
0.5282. So 0.52822. And so if I want the probability y is greater than or equal to 2, then I just subtract 1 minus that answer. So we can do 1 minus that answer right there. And we get 0 0.47178. There's the answer to that one. 0.47178. All right, so that is 2 part B. Okay, so for part 2C, um, what is the probability that a randomly selected sample of five, so we're talking about a sampling distribution for means. So we know that we're gonna have to change our standard deviation here for our sampling distribution. So mu will still equal 125. By the way, that should not go below that point. Sorry about that. Um, so the standard deviation of x bar should equal it's sigma over the square root of n, which in this case would be 6.5 over the square root of 5, which is approximately 2.906. So let's call it 2.91. So 2.91. That is the standard deviation we use. And we want to know the probability that a sample of 5, so that means the x bar has to be uh, greater than or equal to 130. All right, so we want this area right here. All right, so let's figure out some math here. This is a normal distribution. Let's write, let's be very clear. This is a normal distribution with 125 and 2.91. All right, and so we're gonna use normal CDF in the calculator. So here's how I put it in the calculator. The lower bound would be 130. The upper bound is infinity. The mean is 125, and I don't like to put in rounded numbers if I don't have to, so I'm going to just put 6.5 over the square root of 5. We're going to paste that and figure out the answer is 0 0.0427. So the way we write this up, this is 0 0.0427, the probability that x bar is greater than 130 for a sample of 5 is 0 0.0427. All right, I think we're good to go on that. That is 2009, number two.